Welcome to this video on grammar support in Proloco to Go 4. I'm David. And I'm Jennifer. We've greatly improved and expanded grammar support in Proloco to Go 4. In Proloco to Go 3, we gave access to some key verb conjugations as well as the plural and possessives of nouns. In Proloco to Go 4, we've added full conjugations for verbs, pronouns, and adjectives. You'll notice that many buttons in Proloco to Go 4 have filled in upper right corners. Buttons with these corners behave differently if you tap and hold on the button than if you just tap. In most cases, when you tap and hold on the button, you'll get what we call an inflection pop-up. So let's have a look. I help down on you, and here I get the various forms of you. For example, yourself. Yourself. Let's try an adjective. I get bad, worse, and worst, and I also get the adverb badly. Badly. And let's try another one. So with that, I get that and those. Those. Now let's try noun. I'm going to places. And this one. And here I get bus and buses. So the plural and the singular, as well as the possessive forms. As you can see, you tap and hold to get more forms for pronouns, adjectives, nouns or verbs. You can adjust how long you need to hold the button before the inflection pop-up appears. You can also use double tapping instead of holding if that's easier. If you want to customize this behavior, you go to the options, the button at the bottom right. You go to interaction and in interaction you look for the secondary trigger. I can set the secondary trigger to hold or double tap and I can also adjust the timing. Now we're going to show you our verb inflections. First I pick a pronoun, for example, I. I. And now I will pick go and I'll hold down on go. As you can see, I get the simple past, went, the present and the simple future, will go. Will go. I will go. You'll notice that I got the right conjugations for I automatically. This is because I used the word I right before I picked the verb. Prologue to go for is smart enough to know that probably means I want the first person singular form of the verb. The one that goes with I. This feature only works for pronouns. The various forms of I, you, he, she, it, us, they, this, that, these and those. But what if I hadn't picked a pronoun first? I could be starting with a verb or I could want to say Joe and Jim are going. Prologue to go for is not yet smart enough to know that Joe and Jim means they. So I have to give it some hints. If I start to conjugate a verb and Proloctico doesn't have any information on what pronoun you need, you get a different set of choices at first. This allows you to pick the pronoun you mean. You also have some choices that make sense no matter what pronoun you are using. So I tap go now and hold. And here I get the various pronouns I might be using. And I also get the verb root, go, the past participle, gone, the progressive participle, going, and the infinitive, to go. I will now select the third person, and I get the options associated with the third person. Went, goes, will go. Goes. One feature of English that is important to allowing people who use plug to go to sound more natural is using contractions for not. For example, you could say, I did not go there. But that sounds robotic. It's more natural to say, I didn't go there. We've been able to make this possible with a not toggle button in our verb folders. So going back to the previous example, and in this case I'll choose I. I, and I can choose not, and now it will say I didn't go, I don't go, I won't go. Won't go. It was very important to us to give access to complex verb conjugations. Research shows that verb conjugations can be very difficult for AAC users to learn. This is not surprising since so few AAC systems give users the chance to practice using verb conjugations. If they have a system with the separate words you need to create verb conjugations like have for the perfect tenses and would for the conditional tenses and do for negatives and questions, they often had no quick and easy way to combine these words into verb conjugations. This made using more complicated tenses time-consuming to learn and to use.
we wanted people to have all the verb conjugation tools at their fingertips when they chose a verb. And so here's how we did it. I'm going to double tap to clear. And I'm going to pick a pronoun. I'll take you this time. You. And let's take a verb. So you notice we have the, the simple tenses that David talked to you about. Um, the simple past, simple present, and simple future. But we also have these other buttons that show you more past, present, and future tenses. So I'm going to show you the additional past tenses. You can see there are a lot. Um, each of these tenses has a specialized symbol associated with it that represents that tense. Um, in general, what you need to know is if arrow's going backwards, it's a past tense. Uh, or if the little symbol is on the left end of the line, that's also a uh, past tense. Um, anything with a little block, uh, like had stopped or have stopped, that's a perfect tense that uses the verb have. Anything with a dashed line is a conditional tense, so those are the ones that start with would, like would have stopped or would have been stopping. And anything with the two arrowheads is a progressive tense. That means that it's got an ing in there. So those are the past tenses. For present, we also have several. And for future, we also have several. So you can see there's a lot of complexity in the inflections for English. Of course, this is a lot of tenses, and it can be overwhelming especially for someone who has not yet had access to all of these tenses. So we have two ways of making this more manageable. The first is the ability to preview the choices, to hear them in advance. So I'll just show you how this works really quickly. I toggle this preview button and now you can see it has a green outline. That means preview is on. Now what I can do is I can tap any of these choices and I will hear it and you notice it also goes into this Stopped. little green button we call the, the grammar buffer. If I liked what I heard, if that's what I want to use, I just tap the grammar buffer. Stopped. And then that's the word that appears in the message window. But um, if I want to keep exploring, let me see, I'm going to go back to you. If I want to keep exploring, I can go into the past tenses. I can listen We're stopping. to that. No, that's not it. Mm. Would have been stopping. Ah, have stopped, yes. Have that's stopped. the one I want. And you notice that have when stopped. I came back to the verb, the preview button is still turned on. I can turn that off, and then when I go back to a verb, it's off. It's going to remember that state in between all of the inflections that you do. And you also have it available for all inflections, not just verbs. So if someone is learning a language, they hear people using different tenses all the time. They develop kind of an auditory memory for these different tenses, along with the context of where those tenses were being used. Someone's telling a long story that already happened. So maybe they would say, I. I was going to the store. Was going. That's something that's in the middle of the story and it's happening continuously in the story and it's not done yet in the story. Or maybe someone is just telling in one sentence what they did yesterday and so they want to say, I. I went to the store. It's went. already done. We went there. It's over. But, or what they would have liked to do, but they couldn't. So maybe they would say something like, I. I would have gone to the store, would have gone. but my car broke down, so I couldn't do it. These are all very different verb tenses that give you a different sense of what happened and where it was in time. This auditory memory of verb tenses used in different contexts builds up our ideas of what sounds right. We don't actually analyze all of the verbs that we conjugate and create in real life. We just have a sense that, mm, that sounds right, uh, that doesn't sound right. Using the preview feature allows you to use this knowledge of sounds right to check out the choices available before we choose one. So I can go into go. If I want to talk about myself, I can turn on preview. If I want to talk about going to the store in the future, hmm, will go. Will go. I want, to I want to tell a story about what I'm going to be doing. So that's probably going to sound like... We'll be going. 
Yes, we'll be going. We'll be so going. I'm choose that. So all of this previewing might be a little confusing. You're listening, you're listening, you're not really saying these things. So one way to make it clear that we're testing out our choices rather than saying something is to set the preview feature to use a different voice than the regular voice you use for communication. And we can do this by setting up a secondary voice and it's going to be used for preview. So let me just clear this. Here's what you do, you go into settings, and speech and language, and you tap this I at the end of the English speech and language that you're in, and you see we have a primary voice, that's Ella, that's the main voice that we're using. We have a secondary voice, and that is what's going to be used by preview and by any auditory access features that you have, like auditory cues for scanning. Um, so if I select this row, I can pick a different voice to use. So I'm going to use Tracy. Hi, I'm Tracy, the, the female American secondary voice. And here you see I've made the change. And then what's going to happen is when I come in here and use preview. Going. You to Tracy go. Tracy is saying all those previews, Gone. but you'll hear Ella is talking when I actually choose what I want to say. So that's how the Gone. auditory preview works. So while we're building up our idea of what sounds right for our verb tense, when we're trying to talk about things that happened at different times and different situations, it's very helpful to get feedback about how we sound when we're talking. This can be done in a couple of ways. This can be done by telling the person, oh, you made a mistake and here's the right way to say it. As adults, this is usually how we're given feedback in a foreign language class, for example. Uh, for some people, this works very well. They need the feedback to be very clear and obvious. You didn't do it right. Here's the right way to do it. But for people learning their first language, it can be more helpful to do something called recasting. This is where we model in a very conversational way the correct way to say something without making a big deal of it. That way, the person gets to hear the right way to say something, but they don't feel as much like they've done something wrong. This makes them much more likely to explore and take risks with learning language and to have fun, which is a better way to learn. So I'm gonna show you a few mistakes that I might make. So let's say um, I wanna talk about going somewhere. So I could say, I go there. I go there. And the person that I'm talking to isn't sure, is this something that's happened yet? Is it something that hasn't happened? Is this something I want to have happen? And so we might do some back and forth, yes and no, um, questions about whether, um, when this thing is going to happen. And once I figure out, oh, it's that you want to go there in the future. So after we figure out that you mean it's something that's happening in the future. You. We'll go. We'll go. Oh, you will go. Oh, I see. So I'm not saying you did it wrong. I'm just repeating it back in a way that, that gives you the right model. So we can use the preview to help make it easier to hear what you want to say. Another way to make introducing verbs more manageable is to turn off more advanced tenses and forms that you may not want to introduce yet. So if you go to the options, we have a setting there for grammar. So we'll go back to the top level and here we have grammar and here we can turn off grammar support altogether and watch how I turn that off and all the little corners on the top right disappear because now there's no longer grammar support on any of the word forms, not on the nouns, not on the verbs, not on the pronouns or adjectives. I can also be much more selective. I could say for example, I really don't want it on the pronouns yet and then I turn off just for pronouns. I can also be very specific. So for example, I could go in here for the pronouns and say, let's not offer the reflexive form yet. So now if I would go to the I, I would see I, me, mine, my, but not myself. For verbs, there's even more options. So let's go to the verbs. So here you can see we've categorized them in terms of beginning conjugations, intermediate ones, and advanced ones. And you can selectively turn these things off. So for example, I could turn off some of the more complex ones like the progressives here. 
might turn these off altogether. And now, if I go into the verb conjugation, I might choose this one here and I might go to past. You see, the progressives have gone. If I go to the present, I have also turned off some of the progressives. And I've done so as well in the future. In other words, you can completely customize using the uh, grammar options which forms to offer for a particular user and you can gradually over time add new options. And just because most people do not remember from school what the past conditional progressive is or the future perfect progressive, we've included an example with each of these forms. And we have again, as I mentioned earlier, organized them in such a way that you have an idea of what typically comes first in terms of language development and where you might want to start by turning things off and offer them later. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. We rec very much recommend that you watch some of our other videos that cover other aspects of Prolog to go for. You may also want to check out the various resources we have on our website, as well as consider joining one of our Facebook groups.